Hello, people of the internet. It's me, Francis, from Heads Up Display, and for the final episode of the Joss Whedon Experience, we'll be taking a look at Joss Whedon's fourth television series, Dollhouse. After Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, Joss Whedon created his fourth television series, Dollhouse, which is about a company that aims to make your fantasies come true by providing the perfect servant known as an agent or active. They do this by wiping agents' minds and reprogramming them with skills which best suits clients' needs. The series follows Echo, the most requestive active, as she slowly begins to become more self-aware. As she becomes more knowledgeable of her skills and actions, she hopes to end the dollhouse and Rossum, the corporate owners who abuse it. The show's story is definitely noteworthy, however, it's also slow to get into. During the first half of season one, some of Echo's jobs are explored. Each episode has Echo programmed with a different personality, while short little flashbacks describe who she was before joining the dollhouse. At first, these episodes can be seen as filler, but once these conclude, the show begins to evolve into something bigger. I don't blame the producers for this because the whole concept is rather complicated, but hey, at least they have the courtesy of releasing the episodes in order. Just like the TV show's story, the characters are also slow to develop. However, they gradually become more distinct. At the dollhouse, the actors' minds are mind-wiped, and when they are unprogrammed, they behave like babies or dolls. They don't recall any event they took part in or retain any of their imprinted skills. However, they're not completely oblivious in their doll states. Their interactions with the staff drive their development. One particular example is Dollhouse director Adele DeWitt. DeWitt is intriguing because she's both a mother figure and a suppressor who makes tough and sometimes unpopular decisions. Her controversial leadership causes the other characters to question themselves and their beliefs. Topher Brink is also an interesting character because he's not only the brain behind the neuroscience, but he also genuinely believes that his technology is benefiting mankind. It can be seen that Brink and DeWitt's character progression are much more dynamic than the actives. Brink realizes that with great power comes great responsibility, while DeWitt realizes that the morality of her involvement is kind of disastrous. But nevertheless, the character development of the individual actives is nearly impossible due to frequent and spontaneous character change. These complex, multiple personality characters are hard to pull off, but the cast pulls it off perfectly. In fact, some of these actors are highly recognizable from today's top shows. Remember Gadriel from Supernatural or Harold Cooper from The Blacklist? They're both in this show and they did a fine job. Even Jaying from Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a member of the main cast. The fact that the Dollhouse alumni are still active today shows that the Dollhouse is definitely a show with some real talent. In conclusion, Dollhouse is an amazing show and definitely worth watching. Even though the show is a little hard to get into, the actors do an amazing job in portraying all these different types of personalities and evolving the series over the course of the season. With all this in mind, we give Joss Whedon's Dollhouse four stars. Hello everybody, I hope you enjoyed the show. This is the final episode of the Joss Whedon Experience and it's been a great run. If you want another mini-series about your favorite director, writer, etc., comment down below and we'll check them out and we'll see what happens. But until then, this is Francis and this is Heads Up Display. Mm -hmm.